at the end of this lecture, you should be able to know what is immunity, what are its various types, how pre-processing of the B and the T lymphocytes takes place, what is antibody and its structure, explain the classical pathway of the activation of the complement system, and explain the role of the T lymphocytes in the immunity. Assalamualaikum, I'm Dr. Naila. Today, we will discuss immunity. First of all, you must know what is immunity. Immunity is the ability of the body to resist the entry of the foreign invaders. Our body first recognizes the foreign invaders and then resists their entry and prevent their harmful effect. Now, the types of the immunity. There are two types of immunity. Innate immunity, that is non-specific. It is present since birth in the acquired immunity. Acquired immunity is developed after birth and it requires specific exposure to the antigen. It can be active or passive. We will discuss it later. Innate immunity. The cells which are involved in the innate immunity are neutrophils, macrophages, cytotoxic T cells, and the presence of the complement system. The mechanisms which are involved in the development of the innate immunity are phagocytosis, we know that neutrophils and the macrophages have the ability to phagocytose the foreign invaders. It also involves the secretion of the digestive enzymes and the HCL. Tissue histocytes, they offer resistance to the foreign invaders. And the certain substances which are present in the blood such as lysozymes, basic polypeptides, complement complex, and the natural killer cells. It's wide immunity. Acquired immunity is the ability of a body to mount specific responses to the specific organisms or toxins or the foreign tissues. There are two types of the acquired immunity. Humoral immunity, that is B-cell immunity. And the T-cell immunity, which is also called as cell-mediated immunity. Both types of the immunity require antigen exposure. Antigen is a chemical compound. Protein it can either be a protein or a large polysaccharide. It have a molecular weight more than 8,000. Now, we know that all types of the cells develop from the bone marrow, from the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells. From the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, common progenitor lymphoid cells are formed. Then, these lymphoid cells ultimately develop into the B and the T lymphocytes. Now, we will see where the pre-processing of the B and the T lymphocytes take place. From the bone marrow, pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells develop. They will differentiate into the common progenitor lymphoid cells. And those cells that ultimately will be developed into the T lymphocytes, they pass through the thymus. And those cells that ultimately will be developed into the B lymphocytes, they will pass through the fetal liver and bone marrow. So, pre-processing of the T lymphocytes take place in thymus, while that of the B lymphocytes take place in the liver and the bone marrow. Then, B and the T lymphocytes are formed and they are targeted towards the lymphoid organ, where they get lodged in the dormant inactive or the CP form. This is the lymphoid organ in which T and the B lymphocytes are stored in an inactive form. For the release of the B and the T lymphocytes, we require antigen exposure. So whenever the antigen is exposed to the lymphoid organ, B and the T lymphocyte clones which are present in the lymphoid organs get activated and they ultimately form their activated B and T lymphocytes. And the B lymphocytes will ultimately form antibodies. Now, the clone of the lymphocytes. The clone of the lymphocytes are highly specific. One thymic lymphocyte develops specific re reactivity against one particular antigen. In this way, thousands of the T lymphocytes develop specific reactivity against thousand particular antigens. They are responsive to the specific antigens. Now, the mechanism of the activation of a clone. We know that for the activation of the B and the T lymphocytes, we require antigen exposure. So, how the B and the T cell clones are activated? 
एंटीजन एक्टिवेट बी सेल क्लोन बाय बाइंडिंग विद अ सर्फेस एंटीबॉडी एंटीबॉडीज विच आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द बी सेल while the antigen activates t cell clone by binding with the surface receptors which are present on the surface of t lymphocytes so the antibodies are located on the surface of the b cells while the t cell markers or the receptor proteins are present on the surface of t cells what is the role of antigen presenting cells for the role of the antigen presenting cells we must know who perform this action so the antigen presenting cells mainly are macrophages langerhans cells of the skin b lymphocytes and the dendritic cells present in the spleen and lymph nodes these are the antigen presenting cells antigen presenting cells have major histocompatibility complex which is present on its surface and this complex will present antigen to the b and t lymphocytes now the cytokines cytokines are the proteins which are secreted by the immune cells they are hormone like molecules and have a paracrine function cytokines are secreted by lymphocytes macrophages and many other cells they are interleukins now the family of the cytokines it consists of interleukin 1 2 4 6 and tumor and process factor alpha now the source of these cytokines interleukin 1 is secreted by the macrophages what is its important function it activates t cells macrophages and promotes inflammation it is implicated in pathogenesis of septic shock now the interleukins 2 they are secreted by the helper t cells they activate t cells and natural killer cells and macrophages they are used for the treatment of tumors interleukin 4 they are secreted by the helper t cells activate lymphocytes and monocytes interleukin 4 can be used in the treatment of allergies interleukin 6 are also secreted by the helper t cells they are involved in b cell growth and differentiation of plasma cells and antibodies tumor necrosis factor alpha it is secreted by the macrophages by the natural killer cells t cells b cells and the mast cells they are involved in the feedback control of the macrophages and the neutrophil response and used in the treatment of inflammation now the humoral immunity or the b cell immunity we know that after the development of the common progenitor lymphoid cells from the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells these b lymphocytes they are directed towards the lymphoid organs and they are stored in inactive form whenever an antigen is exposed to the b cells the clone of the b lymphocytes becomes activated and these ultimately form lymphoblast cells lymphoblast cells will form plasma blast cells and they will ultimately form plasma cells from the plasma cells antibodies are formed memory cells are are the plasma blast cells antibodies are involved in the primary and the secondary response here is shown the structure of the igg antibody it consists of two heavy chains and two light chains these heavy and the light chains are linked together by the disulfide linkages and these are the antigen binding sites it consists of two portions the variable portion and the constant portion each antibody has a specific nature to bind with a specific type of antigen antibodies are highly specific for the specific type of antigen the variable portion of the light and the heavy chains has the ability to bind with antigen now the mechanism of the actions of the antibodies there are two methods direct method or the indirect method indirect method include the complement system and direct method in includes agglutination precipitation neutralization and lysis now what is agglutination agglutination is the clumping together of the antigen antibody so that the antigen is not allowed to produce its toxic effects what is precipitation 
in precipitation antigen antibody complexes are formed and they are present in insoluble form so inactive antigen neutralization toxic sites on the antigen are covered by the antibodies resulting in inactive antigen lysis these antibodies break down the membranes of the foreign invader now the complement system which is the indirect method of action of antibodies we know that complement system consists of 20 precursor enzymes but only 9 are active the most important are c1 to cd and the proteins b and t it is present in the plasma precursors normally they are present in inactive form so they are activated by the classical pathway we will study it later the classical pathway antigen antibody complex triggers this cascade of complement system now the complement system how the system gets activated whenever there is an antigen antibody complex is formed it causes the activation of c1 into c1 bar this c1 bar will in turn activate c4 plus c2 resulting in the formation of c42 bar plus c4a this c42 bar in turn activates c3 into c3b plus c3a this c3b is involved in opsonization of bacteria c3b in turn activates in the presence of microorganisms plus b and the t proteins C5 will convert into C5B plus C5A. C5A is involved in the chemotaxis of WBCs. We know that chemotaxis is the attraction of the WBCs towards the source of infection. While C3A, C5A and C4A, they are involved in activation of the mast cells and basophils. C5B in turn activates C6 plus C7 into C5B67 bar. And this product will in turn activate complement 8 plus complement factor 9 into C5B6789 bar, which in turn causes lysis of cells. We have done, done this complement system before. Now, the functions of the complement system. It is involved in the opsonization of the bacteria, that is phagocytosis. C3B strongly activates phagocytosis by both the neutrophils and the macrophages, while C5B6789 is the lytic complex, which is involved in lysis of cells, while C5A is involved in chemotaxis of the WBCs. C3A, C4A, and C5A are involved in activation of the mast cells and the basophils. It also involves neutralization of the viruses and agglutination. Agglutination is the clumping together of the increase in the blood flow, increase in protein extravasation, and the clotting of the proteins in the interstitial fluid or the tissues. Now, the types of the antibodies. We know that there are five types of the antibodies which are produced by the plasma cells. First is the IgM. IgM is the high molecular weight antibody and it is involved in the activation of the complement system. It has a role in primary response. While IgG, it is almost 75% of the total antibodies. It is involved in the secondary response and its function is to attach with the complement system, resulting in phagocytosis. IgA is present in external secretions, for example, in saliva, in tears, and in colostrum. IgD. IgD is present on the surface of the B lymphocytes, and it plays role in the recognition of antigen. IgE. It stimulates mast cells and the basophils which in turn release vasodilators. 